Okay, so today we're chasing garfish. We're up on a big shallow flat at the moment, the tide's running in. So obviously we're in half a meter of water at the moment, but that's gonna get deeper and deeper as the tide fills into the port. Now, come with me, I wanna show you something. When you're chasing gars, they get up over the weed banks to feed because they eat the weed and all the stuff that's in it. So this is the sort of ground you're looking for. You want that nice sort of like ribbony style weed. They just absolutely love it. Water's never too shallow for gars, but you'll also get them in deep water. Now to bring gars in to what is a vast expanse of water, we need burley. I've got a big heavy pellet here. Okay, you can use a fine brand burley. We've got the burley pot, everything there ready. What we're gonna do, I need to actually chop that off because I lost my last burly pot so I had to get a new one so what we're going to do to get started I've got a nice fine pellet here it's a little tuna burly pellet it'll have plenty of oil in it just cut a little hole in the bag get our pot we want that nice fine surface burly we don't want a heavy burly that's going to sink so load our pot up just this okay don't need to fill the pot the whole way it's about half full just like that, put the lid back on. And then a good thing to do when you're fishing too, get your burley started before you worry about getting your rods in because we need to burley the fish up. So I get that in there, hook that onto that. I've got just a little tiny rope here. And that's all I'm gonna do is put that over the side like so. That sits in the current and that burley will just start to come out. You can see little flecks of it already coming out. We want it to be a fine burley so these guards don't fill up on it. I will hook this onto the bollard and then we'll get ready for the next part of it. All right, so the next bit I'm gonna do as well is we've got these heavier sort of size pellet, a bigger pellet. Okay, just like those. Again, they're full of oil and bits and pieces, but I'm gonna to add to these with a bit of tuna oil and that gives you that big slick across the surface and a whole lot of smell. So I'll just add some of that in there like so and then give that a bit of a mix around that'll all soak through the pellets and you watch when we put these in the water in a little bit well we'll have the big oil slick coming out you also need a towel when you fish for garfish because they are one of the messiest things you'll ever catch they excrete this green stuff everywhere that will end up all over the boat and probably all over me Okay, so outfit wise, just something nice and light. This is one of my whiting rods. That's one of my whiting rods. That one's a nibble tip. I've got two different styles of float. This is the quill float. So they used to be made out of actual porcupine quills, but this will be plastic or timber. Okay, this is fixed onto the line by a little rubber stopper there. So the line runs through that stopper and then down through this bottom eye just there. The great thing about this system is I can adjust the float up and down to whatever depth I want and when you're fishing with a float you'll often find the fish will sit at a certain depth so by fishing two rods I could have one at half a meter and one at a meter and a half and then just keep adjusting till I work out what level you know these fish are sitting at from the float we've got little tiny split shot squashed along the line okay and these are our weight to make the float sit vertically in the water and the most important thing we just want that orange tip to stick out of the water because any more than that the float hasn't got neutral buoyancy so when the fish grabs the bait and tries to swim away with it it will feel the weight of the float so we have these split shot here i reckon i'm going to need more okay but i rigged this up at home down to a little mustard fine worm hook just like that now i'm going to put this here like so all right, I'm gonna drop this in the water because I haven't checked how this is going to sit. And from here, we can make an adjustment. I've got my little tackle box, split shot, tiny hooks, bits and pieces. All right, so if I drop that in the water like that, see how that floats sitting quite high? There's still a few inches of the white body sticking up. Okay, grab my pliers, grab my split shot i've got a couple of different sizes there but i prefer to use small ones and have to use more of them and you'll see here i've got about 15 20 centimeters of line to my hook all right and the first split shot and then there's the second split shot and so on and now i'm going to add the third one when you're doing this it's important that you spread them out this will help the bait to sit better in the water okay if we put all the weight you know in one spot what happens is that the rig 
actually the bait will be hinged so any movement of waves or boat or whatever the bait does this in the water when you spread the weight out that bait will just tend to waft more because these will actually get a bit of a belly in them through the water so nothing wrong with spreading them out like this i've squashed that onto the line it is a split shot all right i'll show you what they look like up nice and close they don't have the hole through them like a traditional sinker the idea of these is that you can just keep squashing more and more on the line for more weight now we've put three on here they're spread out a little bit i'm going to drop that in the water again and let's see how this sits oh look at that that is about perfect all right bait wise a couple of options here you can use bread you can use whatever you want in this case i've got some prawn and what i do is i shell it chuck the shells in the water a bit of extra burly all right get the knife okay we're fishing for a fish with a small mouth so we want to have a small bait something they can just come up and swallow so i'm just cutting little tiny pieces of prawn just like that and if you're catching really small guys you might need to go even smaller so if i get this now i've got a little tiny hook just get a little piece of prawn so all i need to do is pin that just like that now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just drop this over the side and let it drift back just there see how we go okay so the other float that i've got is called a pencil float so this guy's got that thin stem more of a buoyant body these are really good i suppose in a, in a rougher condition fishing situation but also such a good float because when you get them to sit right the only thing sticking above the water is this super skinny little stem so i want to get the whole body here under the water and just have that sticking out this guy because he's got the fatter body however is going to need more lead i've got a bigger split shot there a smaller one here but i can tell you now that's not going to be enough so again i just drop that in the water well it's actually pretty good that's neat look at that so it's just the stem sticking above the water there yeah that's great I did not think that was going to be enough. So again, I'm going to just have the split shot. I'm in super shallow water at the moment, so slide them down a bit. They've often got a little eye at each end that the line feeds through and you can use a float stop on a running float rig. But I'll show you that at another time when we're fishing deeper water. But this guy for now has a little rubber tube there and there. They hold the line nice and tight so we can adjust the float to where we want it and it will sit there again we're in really shallow water here like we're under a meter of water so i'm going to have to run obviously a very short amount of line to the hook as the tide gets higher we might make a move i might end up in two meters of water and i can run one a bit deeper but for now that is ready to roll and i'm going to use another bait called a silverfish these come from overseas and gars love them for some reason i don't know if it's a visual thing being nice and bright they see it but again just a small piece of bait pin it through once okay and the best thing to do in a tidal situation is drop your float over the side we just want to keep feeding this back with the tide so it looks nice and natural here we go here we go here we go that's better that's what we're after the garfish all right we have to move out a little bit winds picked up a bit but i'm over a little bit of a deeper sort of weed bed fair bit of tide here and that is exactly what we're chasing they get a lot bigger than this but even at this size they're unbelievable bait they're great eating fun to catch and just a touch messy so you see with that slightly longer shank hook makes it easy to get it out Oh, I thought that other float was under and you can see green mess coming out everywhere. I'm going to chuck this guy in the slurry because I'm going to keep some of these to eat. There we go. Yeah, that's not a bad guy, that one. He's a bit better. So much fun. Look at that. You've got a little bit of go about them when they get big too. But this is a fish I just love catching. Good fun on light tackle. Fishing with a float is just one of my favorite ways to fish because you're watching, you're concentrating. Look at that. That's a garfish. That is a proper, proper big gar. 
and they come into places like Western Port every summer. Look at that. Have you ever seen one that big? I'm sure plenty of you have, but I'm sure a lot of you don't realize they, they get that big. Look how thick it is through the back. Again, such a messy fish, but great thing about these, this guy here, good marlin bait, kingfish bait, whatever, but you can knock the fillets off these, cut the rib cage out just like you would on many species of fish. Now, I'm happy to catch these guys all day, every day. I just love them. Okay, so it seems the gars are sitting sort of 10 to 20 meters back. When you're going to cast a float rig out, you don't want to do a snappy sort of cast like you might do with a lure. So instead, have a bit of line hanging off the rod like this, and you just want to do a very gentle lob like that, and then even grab the line at the end, and what it will do is flick the rig out behind the float nice and straight, and it doesn't end up tangled. And then from here, I'll just feed it under my arm. Good thing is too, this bit of wave movement, it's giving the burly pot a constant shake, so we've got plenty of burly going out, and it's all starting to work. More of a normal size gar. All right, need a few of these for bait as well. So. so as you can see, you've got that bill, the red tip on the front of it, okay, and that mouth. They've actually got a decent sized little mouth, but the whole idea is that they just drop that bill down a little bit, open their, their jaw and everything just funnels into there, all the, the micro stuff that they eat. They eat a lot of weed and things like that, hence all the green stuff coming out of his back end, but such a popular fish to chase and catch. Such good eating, good bait, good everything, because pelagic species love eating garfish, like kingfish, snapper, tuna, Mulloway, Taylor, everything loves garfish, and it's such a thing in fishing that quite often something that tastes good that we like, the fish also like, being things like calamari squid. That's a better one. I just reloaded the burly pot with all that oil coming out. And I'm pretty sure that that instant reloading of the pot has definitely helped. We have a bit of a go for a little fish. I've got a bunch of mates up the coast that'll be looking at this going, you better be cryovacking these so we can use these for marlin baits. But look at that, on the ground, look at the thickness of it. They just become a different animal when they get up into that sort of 50 centimetre size. But look at that. Cool looking fish. I love them. I know they're only small, but I love them. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix it up a little bit, show you how to use one of these burly floats. So as you can see there, I filled that with some burly. All right, and you can use bread, you could use whatever you want. That end goes back on there. Both these ends are buoyant, so it helps to hold the whole lot up with the weight in it. But then for something different, look, you could run just a normal rig down to a couple little hooks or a single hook but I've just got a bit of a sabiki jig, so that little flashy, tiny hook there. Bomb sinker on the bottom, so this is gonna drift back with the tide, and that will sit out and wriggle like that. And this bit of weight here keeps the whole rig nice and straight. So it's a really great form of fishing, really good when you're land based, because it gives you really good casting distance if you need that. If not, you can drop it in and drift it out. But the other one is, once it's out, you can just slowly, slowly wind it back and actually pull the rig back towards you it sits like that through the water. It doesn't ride up, okay? It just sits like that. And guys don't mind a moving bait. So drifting back in the tide or sometimes even pulling up into the tide nice and slow, they'll eat it. But so will other fish like Tommy Ruff and species like that. So really handy, but when you're using a float like this, you're self burlying. So if you want to cast it out and keep casting it in the same spot or holding it in one area, you're literally burlying that one area and you, you can have a whole spot to yourself. So we'll get this guy in the water. I'm just gonna lob him out a little bit and I will let it drift back for a bit. It's amazing how often something just different like this can change your day. There we go. There we go. See, it does work. The burly float, the little bait jig on the bottom. Love it when a plan comes together. Oh, all right, there we go. So hopefully you've learned something. It's 
easy, fun fishing. And for all this gear and more, make sure you get into your Anaconda store.